Oops, was bottom. I supposed to add bay leaves there? I think I was. Yes. Yeah. Oops. There you go, bay leaves. Okay. Yay! It's Lauren. I'm hot for food. It's the Hot for Food Test Kitchen today, and I'm so, so excited because next to the release of my cookbook, I was just as excited, if not more excited, for my BFF, Timothy Packard, to release his cookbook, <gasps> Mississippi Vegan! Recipes and Stories from a Southern Boy's Heart. It's beautiful. It's thick. It's hardcover. It's got some texture on here. Look at this photo. Now, I, of course, am friends with Tim, and we were supportive of each other all through both the making of my cookbook and the making of his cookbook. Uh, so I did hear a lot about, you know, the choosing of the cover and the recipes that were going in it and stuff, and I've been waiting a long time to see it, and it's gorgeous. And truthfully, not just because we are best friends, but it actually is one of the most unique and one of the most beautiful cookbooks I have ever seen. So I'm putting it through the Hopper Food Test Kitchen today, and there was so many recipes to do. A lot of them are, of course, Southern influence which is a cuisine that I, of course, have no experience with other than when I go and hang out with Timmy in New Orleans or in Mississippi. Um, but, you know, obviously the influence is there when you go out to eat and stuff like that. But certain things in here I've never had or ever heard of or ever made. Um, and it's a lovely book, and so I decided to go with the classic gumbo, mainly because gumbo is a dish that I've never made or had until I hung out with Timmy. Um, and so it even is the first picture you see when you open up the book here. So it's very, you know, important to him. I think it was really important to the making of this cookbook, this gumbo recipe, because, you know, he learned to cook from his mom. Anyways, there's a lot of history here and a lot of like beautiful stories. There's pictures of Timmy as a little kid. And I really encourage you to order the book. It's available now online and in store worldwide, wherever books are sold. Despite having the classic gumbo, which is what we're gonna do, there's also many gumbo recipes in here. Gumbo, I don't know how to say these words. There's a Z in front. Gumbo zmaze, gumbo zerbs. <laughs> I think I'm saying it wrong. I should have asked him before. Gumbo zfungi. So anyway, I'm just gonna go with the classic. Uh, yeah, and we're gonna get to it. I basically, I'm not gonna show you every step and ingredient in the recipe because you need to get the cookbook uh, to make it and to know what you're doing. It is slightly more complicated um, than some of the other recipes in here only because there's many steps and many ingredients, but that's what gumbo is. It's like this layered, amazing party in a pot um, and you have to build the flavors in this way. So I'm not discouraging you from making it. I think it's actually worth doing, uh, but I'm gonna give it a try for the very first time right now because that's what I do here in the test kitchen. So anyways, I'll show you what we're working with here. So as you can see, there's a, a lot of components here. <laughs> this is not the kind of recipe where you do this as you go. You need to get this ready in advance so that you're raring to go over by the stove and then you pretty much don't leave the stove for a while. We've got Timmy's famous Creole spice mix right here. So mix that up. We're gonna mix up the liquid or the broth all together and then that'll be ready to dump in. So I've already read through this once, but you know, I'm gonna have to keep it together here. We're also gonna make a roux with peanut oil and flour um, in a hot cast iron skillet. So that is an art in and of itself. I'm a little bit nervous to make the roux because I've never done that properly. Here, this is just my vegetable stock. I'm using like a bouillon and then adding water to make it a stock. That whole thing goes right in here. Ah, it's all gonna splash. Hopefully, oh my God, this is gonna be so full. Oh my God, I don't even think I have it big enough. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't have anything bigger than this. Here, we're gonna have to transfer this into here. We're not blending this. Uh-oh, this is gonna be a disaster. Oh, okay. It's also too small. <laughs> okay, just a little troubleshooting. This is gonna make a lot of gumbo. It says six to eight servings. Fresh tomato, wine, half a cup of wine. And now for the most important part of this, our own glass of wine. Because when Timmy cooks, he drinks wine. And especially when you're making gumbo and you're making this roux, you want a glass of wine to like keep you occupied and just not distracted, but keep you, 
keep you occupied and having fun while you're at the stove for a little bit of time here. So cheers, Timothy Packron, your cookbook is awesome. Everybody go get it. We'll probably cheers like three more times in this video. Okay. <laughs> so we're just adding a few other things here. Just a lot of things. We got a lot of jars here. How do I combine this? <laughs> what the? I guess everything's bigger in the south. Is that the saying? Okay, did I do that right? Step three. Now you're ready to make the roux with an exclamation point. Okay, so let's go to the stove and make the roux. Bring your wine, of course. So you need a cast iron skillet, a good one. We're adding all this oil and heating it. You need a roux spoon, which is a flat wooden, something that's wooden with flat. Mine has a hole, I don't know what this is for. Maybe that's to measure pasta, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, carefully, I think you have to add this. It starts cooking right away, so you gotta get in there with your spoon, and then you turn this down to medium. And you have to be very careful. See how it's like bubbling? This is why you need the flat spoon, because it pushes it around evenly. It's hurting my arm. <laughs> so there's actually a version that's gluten-free flour in the cookbook, Timmy's cookbook, so not to worry. You too can have gumbo if you're gluten-free. Okay, this is the roux. It looks delicious. Obviously you would never drink that, you would kill yourself. I'm just taking off the heat for two seconds because I'm noticing it would smoke. And the next step is to add the onion and celery mixture. Okay, there. See, good thing I just let it cool off just a minute there. That's hot. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Ooh, yeah. It smells amazing. And now we're adding all of the special spice blend and toasting that up. Woo. This is so much flavor. This is our gumbo base. That's the base. We're transferring everything now over here into a stock pot. That's heavy. Add the broth. Okay, ready y'all? Oh geez. <laughs> Oh shit. Okay, just the right amount of room. Bring to a boil, stir often to prevent burning. So I better just keep stirring it, I guess. All right, so I just brought it to a boil, reduced it to low. It's gotta reduce for 40 minutes at a simmer. So there's really nothing to do except stirring it a few times here and there. Hopefully it doesn't boil over my little pot here. Yeah, 40 minutes. We'll be back in a second. Okay, it's much thicker, darker brown, reduced. You can see where it's lowered in the pot. So now we're gonna add okra, green onion, and the rest of that like veg mixture. Uh, the okra I had to get frozen because I can't find fresh okra over here in the north. Uh, so it's not that great looking, but I'm gonna put it in anyway. Okay, so now we gotta cook this for 20 more minutes. Okay, so we're good, I think. It says to taste it and add salt and pepper to taste if you need it and extra cayenne if you want it. I don't think I'm gonna want more cayenne. It's very hot. Woo! I don't think I'd add anything else. Now I noticed mine's not as dark as the one in the book and maybe that's because my roux didn't get as dark as it should have because this is pretty much the color of the roux, isn't it? So whatever color the roux is, is whatever color your gumbo is. But I like that. That is delicious. Okay, we're gonna serve it up.
Whoa, look at the classic gumbo from the Mississippi Vegan Cookbook. What? Now that was something, but I feel very proud of myself. Timmy does say in the intro to this chapter, with gumbos and soups and stews, that the okra is the most important part. Which, although I am one of those people that doesn't like the slimy okra, it really does help thicken it in a way and then you don't notice it. Mmm! Wow. Timmy and I have eaten a couple of gumbos, I think. One in LA, and one somewhere else, but this is outstanding. He said it's one of the first things he ever learned how to cook. So he's had years of perfecting it. Mm. And what's funny about something like this is like, this is like something I never eat and grew up never eating. It's like a flavor I don't even, I can't even describe. Oh yeah. Mm. Mmm, cook up some white rice to go in there. Brown rice if you must. Mmm. All right, the Mississippi Vegan Cookbook is available now. Order it online, get it in stores. I've linked it below if you're looking for it. It's delightful, it's beautiful, so unique. You're not gonna find recipes like this anywhere else. So, do it up. Love you, Timmy. Follow Mississippi Vegan at Mississippi Vegan on Instagram. He posts lots of great stuff and on his blog, MississippiVegan.com. I just went to his book launch in New York this week. It was so fun and not sure if it will be up on my channel by this time or not, because obviously I've pre-taped this segment. <laughs> but. There either is or is coming a vlog from our little hangout in New York and his book launch. So go check it out on my personal YouTube channel. Okay, I got some gumbo to eat. In fact, I have a whole pot full of gumbo that I gotta divvy up and share with people that I live with in my building here. Um, okay, I'll see y'all next Wednesday. Here every Wednesday, subscribe, follow me at Hot for Food and at Lauren Toyota. And I'll see you soon. That was the Hot for Food Test Kitchen. Bye.